Why man? The mysteries of human creation and purpose have been answered by insurmountable imaginings of theorists. Despite the vain philosophies and mythologies of man that have polluted the original design of human beings, God communicated the duty and purpose of humanity through the manifestation of his power. Ecclesiastes 12:13 and 2 Peter 1, verse 3. Every time the mind of God in verbal or written form is revealed to the carnal and limited mind of humans, people begin to comprehend how little they know in comparison with the mind of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 19-21 through 21. Nevertheless, with such a mind as God, skeptics have asked, Why would an all-knowing God create mankind knowing that the majority would be condemned? Christ stated, For many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. Few implies less than half. Some have compared this question to the illustration of a plane engineer. No plane engineer would create a plane knowing the majority of people who would get on the plane would die a terrible death. So why would God? Mankind exists as the manifestation of God's love. God's loving nature is not incomplete without man, but God is pleased to express his love in the creation of humanity. Psalms 115 verse 3, John 3:16 3, and Romans chapter 8 verses 35 through 39. Why would it please God to bestow an endless supply of grace, mercy and compassion on a creation that he foreknew would reject him, yielding ceaseless rivers of rushing sin, inconceivable misery and sacrificing his son to the death of the cross? Because love triumphs over grief. If God cared more about the numbers than the individual, the world would never have been created. Is a person thinking right about God when he or she stands on a mountain of self-made adversity, misery, and trial, and then blames the love of God for his or her wretched life? Such an attitude is a pathetic attempt to escape human accountability. James chapter 1 verses 13 through 16. Man's continual existence is evidence for the love of God. 1 John chapter 4 verses 9 through 10. God gives people the chance to redeem themselves and save themselves. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 and Acts chapter 2 verse 40. The fault of the sinful majority does not rest in the love of God. God cares more about quality than quantity. Quantity does not dictate the quality of righteousness. Religious groups change their doctrine with each passing generation and new ideas of morality emerge. But God's law and doctrine has remained unchanged. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, James chapter 1 verse 17. If all God wants is everyone in heaven, then he would have to change right and wrong daily, perhaps more than that. But God cannot arbitrarily decide right and wrong any more than he can change his nature. God's nature is right and wrong. To ask God to change right and wrong to accommodate the modern moral climate so more people could go to heaven would be like asking a person to stop being a person. Righteousness is the nature and being of God and cannot be changed. For God, making the whole world to save just one was enough reason to create mankind. Because God loves the one. Matthew chapter 18, verses 12 through 13. The idea is not that God does not love the lost, but rather the lost have rejected the love of God and condemned themselves. James chapter 1 verses 13 through 15. God gave mankind the ability to choose his love, and unfortunately, the majority have not. But God created the world because he foresaw the ones who would choose him in selfless love. Love will always triumph over the grief of loss. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 55 through 57.